Hello and welcome to this Power BI tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. Today we're going to be looking at Icon Map, potentially the best map visual, custom map visual, that you've never heard of. So we're going to look to create something like this and another, another live example demonstration. But before we do that, I'm going to look at some of the documentation. So Icon Map was produced by James Dale. It's a completely free custom visual and there is so much conditional formatting layering present it's astounding james dale has taken this off of the the app source custom visual market however you can download this directly from his site and i'm just going through some of the it's a great site it's straightforward i'm going through some of the features there so to actually download this, as I said, it's not an app source. It's not like a standard custom visual download. You can just click on this latest download, the Icon Map Beta for December, and you get this PBI viz file that should just download straight into your, your downloads folder or, or wherever it's set to. And from there, Obviously, I've already got this in my report, but if you didn't, you just need to click the ellipsis and instead of get more visuals, import a visual from a file. And very straightforward process, it should just successfully import into your Power BI report. Now, why, why Icon Map? Well, there are some established maps within Power BI and some custom visuals. As standard, we have Map, Fill Map, Shape Map, ArcGIS, and Azure um, is, is making its way in map boxes as strong contenders. However, they don't have the flexibility present here. ArcGIS is a good visualization, but really you need a paid subscription. And Icon Map's completely free. It's great for supply chain use case. There's loads of um, cross functionality with map box, ordnance survey, conditional formatting and the icon presence on a map is is fantastic so you know as far as i'm concerned this is right up there in terms of the power bi map visuals and it's something that power bi often gets a hard time for so big thumbs up to james dale and the the time spent on this has, has definitely been a a worthwhile endeavor so my data set is very simple. I've got an asset ID type, a latitude and longitude, a load in tons and a bearing. The bearing's going to, it's gonna be apparent as to why I have this, um, but we're gonna get started. So into the category and the size, I'm just going to, to add the asset ID to make things as simple as possible. And I will add the longitude and latitude in the relevant fields and that's all we need to get started so you can see off the bat i've got a nice visualization there's a lot we're going to do but as standard i have that like you may see in the map visual the circle um, but let's look at how we can power this up so icon map the hints in the name we can add icons so i could actually hard code in a an image url um, but i've actually got this in my data set as you can see in my icons in the table so first example great i can conditionally format this and it's very simple and now i get all of the relevant icons because i have different asset types of course i'll have to increase these so we can do that now i can adjust the minimum size within the object here to 35 fantastic you can see and there, I, i've actually included a nice workaround here this is sort of from a supply chain sense i've got my oil rig for my drilling my shipments, I've got my plane for air freight, and I've actually also included in the map, um, it's not an asset as such, but my high priority countries, so Norway, the States, and the United Kingdom. So I've managed to do that as well. So tiny, tiny workaround adds a lot of value here. So yeah, fantastic already with the icons adding a lot of value there. Now, you'll notice I had that bearing column. And what I'm actually doing here is, you know, if you pulled this data from an API or a database, you probably may have something similar. 
I'm actually getting the the direction that my my shipment's pointing in. So by doing that bearing, I've created almost a, a rotation value so that we can see if we picture that this is live assets and it's live map data, let's say from an API, we want to show the direction that the freight's traveling in, obviously, to get the most real time data. Now we could hard code this in with the image rotation, but well, for two things, it knocks my rigs off, which we obviously don't want to happen and my high priority. And obviously it's not going to be representative for each individual live journey. So bang, the conditional formatting, again, a fantastic use case. I can put that bearing item in here, click OK, and now you can see everything is traveling the way it should be. Everything isn't traveling north now, it's traveling in the respective di direction. I've got freight here traveling upwards in the United Kingdom, might be going to a site and so on. So that's a fantastic feature. I'll zoom in and out here as I go and look at different different aspects. And you'll also see that when I eventually get the hang of this and zoom out, we can see our air freight traveling in the correct direction as well. So if we're looking at live data, that conditional formatting capacity is fantastic and it's, it's a huge strength of this map visualization. Some other points, we can change the coordinates. Um, like I say, we have some really good uh, background map layers off the bat. Now we've got our standard sort of street maps. There's an ode to ordnance survey. This this one here, the topo map is actually fantastic. Now I would maybe use this for drilling or a geological um, setting, or even, you know, if you had like a live map of a zoo or something, you, you can think of the possibilities. Now you can actually, map box is a custom visual within Power BI, but you can also harness the power within here using token keys and you can even add in your own custom layers so you could get your custom map types. Now the custom overlay is, is a really good feature because I said that this is sort of the king of the supply chain maps in my opinion. And what you can actually do, we could generate an API. If you go to open weather, you can get the, the 1.0 version for free. And we could start to now show sea level pressure, wind speed, temperature. That's gonna have a few, huge effect on either looking at our live transport or a past transport. So if we overlay that as well, it adds a huge, huge um, power to what we're doing and, and getting insights from our data. I really like the daylight terminator. This actually will show us in which time zones we have daylight and, and obviously by the equator where darkness applies again. Fantastic feature to have it natively straight out the bat. I'm very impressed. Uh, and also it's gonna add, it can add a lot of insight and, and help us make data-driven decisions, which ultimately is what we want to do. Now there's lots of other options we can format borders we'll look at that in the next example our objects we we've already looked at that really concerns our icons and in our next example we'll be able to show our destination via those flow lines and and we got not all of these are going to be fully appropriate we can take away the zoom and as we look at the other options we do have a lasso select feature which i'd encourage you to dive into we can apply labels Again, hard code these or use conditional formatting. Well, I would choose not to in this, this particular instance, but again, a great feature. And we can go through and look at highlighting or zooming. Highlighting is not gonna be hugely important because we have the custom icons. And in general, again, we have a lot of the standard features that encourage you to look into this. Now for the second example, I've got those flow lines, I'm looking to track previous journeys and you can see it's it's absolutely fantastic use case to do that as well. And actually, whereas before we were looking at a potential situation where we'd have our live, we're tracking live shipments. Well, here we can look at past the journey that they took and we can start off by looking at some of the layers. So if you're British or even if you're not, Ordnance Survey is a huge... <laughs> It's almost an institution here with mapping and this, I'm not sure if it's 
directly from Ordnance Survey. I know that they have APIs available, so you can look into that. But it's definitely an ode to them, a nod to them anyway. And it, it is a fantastic schema. And I, I'm really impressed at some of the style of these. For this example, I'm going to use the grey because it really highlights the journey that we've taken. And our data, again, the difference here to get those flow lines, we just had to add the destination latitude and longitude. I've made a workaround again with my icons. Instead of adding maybe icons, instead of adding high priority countries, I've added where there could be potential road works. Uh, and again, this is going to help us look at our our future data or our future decisions by utilizing the trends that we've seen in previous data. Obviously, the data set is mock and small because I wanted to have this quite sparse and highlight the what we're actually doing and what we can do with the power of this visualization. So there is some slight differences. Again, with the conditional formatting, I was able to add as well as the standard image because it's all arising from this one depot. As you can see, the latitude and longitude are the same, but the destinations are different. So I was able to add an image at the line destination again using the conditional formatting and the icon. Equally, we could have had a flag or a checkpoint or something to show when the, the shipment arrives. You can see that within the flow lines, we've got two options. So I chose not to go for straight. I chose to go for geodesic, which just essentially shows the curvature of the map and the, the direction that was that was taken. And the, I haven't done too much else than that, but it's, again, there's there's so many use cases, you know, we could even use this, we could add some advanced analytics measures, we could show things like house prices in an area, you know, the, the possibilities are unlimited, but from supply chain, which is interesting, this is fantastic. You'll see as well, slicer integration's great, and, and we get that nice zoom in and zoom out without having to do anything other than select a slicer. So I'm hugely impressed. The conditional formatting has, has blown me away. And as usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and please try out the icon map visualization. Thank you. Thank you.